Washington? Ladies and gentlemen, let me start from the beginning and do it in 30 seconds or less. These are hardcore communists. This is what Mao Zedong did during the Cultural Revolution in China. I explain it to you in great deal in Government Zero. It starts with the removal of art and history and the replacement of art and history, the revision of art, the revision of history by communists. It leads to very bad ends. Look at what Pol Pot did in Cambodia. Look at what Mao Zedong did in China. It started with cultural revision. It ended with millions dead. De Blasio is a psychopath. He's no different than anyone else you saw on the stage at the fake Democrat Soviet debate twos, they accept Jim Webb. I explain it all in Government Zero. Yes, my friends, it's all in my new book. I can add a few other names to what uh, cultural revolutions have done to countries, but I think you can pretty much put two and two together. Take a look at Zimbabwe. Take a look at what happened to that great nation as a result of cultural vision and desire to make it diverse. You know, that's a great story unto itself. When it was under colonial rule by the British, it was called Rhodesia for Cecil Rhodes. We know it was re racist, horrible, horrible. It was so horrible that Rhodesia was able to produce enough food to not only feed everyone in the country, but export food. Well, that all went by the way of the dodo bird. You see, there was a revolution brewing, as there is in America right now, and people were screaming for more diversity. They wanted local rule, and so they got local rule in uh, Rhodesia. They renamed the country Zimbabwe. Mugabe, the dictator, murdered tens of thousands of people, and what happened after a while under diversity was the new country of Zimbabwe could not only not feed itself, it became a begging, a begging nation on the world stage, begging for food to feed its own people. It was no longer not only not exporting food, it had to import food. If this keeps up in America, we'll be on the world stage begging for wheat, soybeans, and pork. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Let's go to the call. As you know, earlier in the show, two hours ago, I mentioned that fava beans cannot be eaten by certain ethnic groups, and I wrote about it in 1991 or 92. I don't remember when in my book, The Skeptical Nutritionist, Macmillan published it. Not widely read, I don't know, it sold 20,000 in hardcover, which for those days was very big. And I was very happy with the results. Today, everything's crazy, what you have to sell for a book to make it. It's unreal. One day I should do a show on books and writers and how it's impossible for writers to break in or get published today. It's unbelievable. KSFO, Renee, you want to talk about the fava bean story. What do you have to add? Yeah, um, my great-grandmother suffered um, from what what I researched, because when I was younger, I also affected beans, the G6PD deficiency. Correct. It's fava bean hemolysis. It's a missing enzyme, in the, and the fava beans cause the bleeding. Yes. Um, now, there, now, there are certain ethnic groups that cannot eat fava beans because they lack this enzyme. And number one is the Ashkenazi Jewish people cannot eat, eat fava beans. But there was another ethnic group. Do you know which one it is? Well, I'm my ethnic group. I'm we're Portuguese. Um, I'm not sure of the of, of another ethnic. Well, that's interesting. On that's very intriguing. And I don't want to say anything about ancestry, but you know, <laughs> genes kind of indicate something right there. Uh, during the Inquisition, many people who were Jewish were converted forcibly to to Catholicism. You know that, right? Yes. No, you didn't know that. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that you're not Portuguese. I'm saying that. There could be a strain of the Jewish blood in, in the lineage, because I don't know of many other ethnic groups that have a deficiency of this enzyme. There are there are a few, but I didn't know the Portuguese were one of them. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that either. Uh, when I was younger, um, I was diagnosed with anemia, um, and which, you know, I got over taking iron pills and whatnot. Um, but now that I'm older, I don't really have a problem with it, but... Um, I love fava beans, but now that there is a link with my great grandma, they're kind of a little worrisome. <laughs> right. Well, I'm, I'm warning people not to eat fava beans without checking out whether they're deficient in this in this enzyme because the glucose the glucose six phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is more widespread than people uh, uh, may know. And fava beans or broad beans contain high levels of visine, the visine 
devising. That's funny. The Democrats seem to have a lot of devising, convicing, and they will develop anemia, jaundice, and symptoms like this if they eat this stuff. They cannot protect their red blood cells against this. So you have to check out what your ethnic group is because you may be allergic to it. You know, it's uh, this deficiency is common in people of Mediterranean and African origin. Incidentally, I remember read. I'm looking it up in the Skeptical Nutritionist. I have a copy right here. People of Mediterranean and African origin. Well, that would match the Portuguese. They are Mediterranean people in a way, even though they're on the Atlantic. They are a Mediterranean people. I would think I would think you consider yourself a Mediterranean people. But the, the G6PD deficiency has resulted in deaths, by the way. G6PD deficiency resulted in 4,100 deaths in 2013 and 3,400 deaths in 1990. It's very serious. That's amazing. Now, here's something really odd. Carriers of this G6PD allele are protected to some extent against malaria. Do you know that? It's amazing. And in, in fact, some males who carry this deficiency have shown complete immunity to malaria. So there's always something more to something than, than meets the eye. It's not that there's a deficiency that's bad. In other words, let's say Africans and Mediterraneans lack this enzyme and they can't eat fava beans because they get this type of anemia, this fava bean hemolysis. So you ask yourself, why did the, the humans in those regions develop this deficiency? How did they evolve to develop this deficiency? And why would nature have done that? The answer is because it gave them a certain immunity to malaria which was endemic in those areas in those days. There's a genius at work in the universe that we can never put our fingers on, and that's one of the reasons I was always knocked on my feet by science, because they always science has always answered questions for me that made sense. You know what I'm saying? Yes, absolutely. Well, Renee, thank you for that. I'll send you a copy of Government Zero. We don't talk about G6PD deficiency. We talk about common sense deficiency in liberals throughout all branches of government. You look into this because fava beans are sold now so widely in America and people are eating them thinking, oh, they're all good for me. Well, you may not be able to digest them and you may get hemolytic, uh, dis a hemolytic disease called favism. So, okay, that's all. I don't want to go into it. I really think the ethnic stuff is so interesting. I remember I studied ethno-nutrition when I was, oh, many years ago. That was one of my favorite fields, ethno-nutrition. Well, that's another subject for another day, because what I found was, of course, we are all, we're all products of our ancestry. Is that a given? Yes. Now, does that mean that everyone can eat everyone else's cuisine as we all do? How many of us walk through a street in a big city? I think I'll have Japanese. No, I'll have Chinese. No, I'll have Thai. No, I'll have Cambodian. No, I'll have uh, European food. Well, maybe your body can't handle all of those different diets. Maybe there's a certain ethnic diet that is best for your for your ancestry. I once wrote a book on this. I think, it, yes, the, the whole book, The Skeptical Nutritionist, was about that as the theme. Only 40 years ahead of its time. I don't know. I'm not selling it somewhere on the internet probably for $200. The point is, is that if you're, an, if you're a person who identifies with your ethnic group, look into your ethnic background and see what your, what your traditional ethnic diet is. Be back in a minute. Hillary last night with we're going to give this, we're going to give that, we're going to give that. She's the poor woman. She's got to give everything away because this maniac that was standing on her right is giving everything away. So she's following. That's what's happening. This socialist slash communist. OK, nobody wants to say it. <laughs> I say it. Kyle. No. They, they, they know who Bernie is, and they know who Trump is. They hate Bernie. Oh, the, the average person hates Bernie Sanders. They met him, and they, they met Bernie's in their life. Bernie Sanders is, is uh, made off in a different guise. He's a con man. He says one thing, but he lives another life. You know the type. He's a Bernie Madoff, not a Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is Bernie Madoff in drag, in essence, a political drag. Let's put it that way. So he found socialism worked for him his whole life. Oh, good the worker comes to, you know, it worked for him his whole life. Look, he went from Brooklyn, an unknown schnook, and he bamboozled the idiots in Burlington and made him mayor. Before long, he was a senator. The idiots in Vermont, they didn't, what do they know up there? They eat Ben and Jerry's, what can they know? They poisoned their brain with fat and sugar. 
So who would they vote for but someone like him? But going back to beans for a minute, you know, I got to finish up the beans story. I don't like beans myself, and I never knew why. I always got like sick from beans. It's because I come from good lineage. I, I was just reading this. It says that the priests of various Greek Roman era cults were forbidden to eat or even mention beans. And Pythagoras had a strict rule that to join the society of the Pythagoreans, they must swear off beans. Now, in those days, it was because the beans resembled the genitalia. But it may have had another protective reason for it. It's an interesting side note. It's not that I have a priestly uh, aversion <laughs> to beans. I just don't like eating them. So there go the tacos. It's the end of the burritos, which I have once a month. I, I don't feel good on them anyway. But there's another side to this that I have to discuss. We're talking about the favism. I don't want you to think it's a very small number of people on the planet who are affected by this G6PD deficiency. And the reason I'm going on and on is because fava beans are very popular in Italian restaurants today. And they, they push it and no one even knows what they're eating. You should understand that you can get very sick if you lack this enzyme. And it affects more than 400 million people around the world. This deficiency resulted in 4,100 deaths in 2013, 3,400 deaths in 1990. So who was affected and how would you know? African, Middle Eastern, and South Asian people are affected the most, particularly those in these areas who have these ancestries. Now, here is the thing. Why would so many people on Earth have evolved to have a deficiency of this enzyme? Because I said to you that it confers, one effect of this disease is that it confers protection against malaria. And there are theories as to why it protects against malaria, which you can read about yourself. So in other words, the G6PD deficiency I'm talking about offers an evolutionary advantage for those who lived in malarial endemic environments. Do you understand how that works? It's very interesting. Well, it's similar to the sickle cell disease issue. Remember many years ago, there was a big push about Africans and sickle cell disease. And people were trying to overcome it here in America. Well, that's interesting. Maybe in America you didn't want sickle cell disease. You certainly didn't. But it also is seen in the scientific community as offering an evolutionary advantage. The sickle cell disease does in the environments where malaria was and is epidemic for the same reasons and by the same mechanism. But this is over the head of the average uh, racist Democrat who will just simply say that whatever you're saying is wrong, whatever you're saying is racist, you're against black people. I mean, this is how they'll take what I'm saying. I get it. I know how they think. They don't think. Guys like Bernie Sanders don't think. They're the made off of political of the political world. They'll say anything to pander to the lowest common denominator. Eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Do you have a Bernie uh, piece for me? Not of me doing it. I need to warm up because I'm going to do a Bernie in a minute. I don't feel good from the lunch, so I'm ready to do a Bernie Sanders imitation. My energy has left me. I feel a little sick from the pink tuna burger, even though I reheated it. I'd like to sue that rat. I won't sue him. I'm going to give him a, I'm going to go on Yelp. I'm going to ruin their business. I mean, you should go on Yelp when a place stinks. You ask for a fish thing that's supposed to be cooked through and it's pink. Then I want to know how old the fish burger is in this joint. You know, I love it. Everything is, we do everything handcrafted. Good food takes time. Like $17 for a, a burger. It should be three cents. Eh, I'll learn one of these days. Eight five five four hundred. So we don't have it. We don't have a Bernie. I'm like groping for a Bernie. Fire away any Bernie. Just the voice. My question all. for the candidates is, do black lives matter or do all lives matter? The question from Arthur <laughs> in Des Moines well, is, do black lives matter or do all lives matter? Let's put that question to Senator Sanders. Black lives matter. matter. And Trying the reason, the reason no one else those words is because matter they are a primary constituency the of my voting block. That on any given okay, day. No, I'm trying to just get the voice. This guy is amazing. Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff in political, in political clothing. Okay, my friends. What do you want to talk about? I'm not going to do climate. Do you have any questions for Bernie out there? No, I don't want to do that either. Let me see the news. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the news. That's what people are tuning in for. Mike, do the news. I don't want to hear about fava beans. I don't want to hear about hemolysis. I don't want to hear about G6PD deficiency. No, I want you to imitate Bernie Sanders for the rest of your radio career. 
whatever, 20 more years. Let's see. Carson, 